So in discussing the motivation for the formula for the trapezoidal rule, let's just kind of briefly look again at our formula. Okay, so we have T sub n is equal to delta x over 2 times, now we've got something a little bit different. So it's f of x naught plus 2 times the sum of each f of x i plus f of x sub n. Now, just in terms of using our formula here, delta x still stands for the width of, this is uh, the width of each sub interval. And here x sub i is the left endpoint of the ith sub interval. So let's just kind of get to it. There are some similarities with the midpoint rule and um, so I'm kind of going to be highlighting those. So here's our scenario. We've got a function and our goal, remember our goal is to estimate the area under the curve, right? So the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Now how we're going to do it is step one, you divide your interval a, b into n sub intervals. So divide your interval a comma b into n sub intervals. Why n? Because we're trying to compute t sub n, right? So that n tells you the number of sub intervals you're going to use. And as is written in the notes, typically the more sub intervals you use, the more accurate your approximation will be. Okay, if the function is continuous that you're integrating. All right. So let's just pretend here. Do, 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 do. We're just going to divide this into n. Actually, I'd like to use this specific example. So let's just assume that we're working with a specific example. I'm going to do it in this light purple. We're going to, sorry, <laughs> we're going to show what happens for n equal to, say, I don't know, maybe n equal to 5. So I need to split this interval a, b into five equal sub intervals. So I'm just going to estimate here that it's going to be one. Let me, so maybe one, two, three, four, five. So you can kind of, it's not perfect, but like according to our Notation, a is going to be x naught, x1 is our, is the right, is the left endpoint of our second interval, x2 is the, right, so we've got our endpoints here, x4, and then b is equal to x5, okay, so always a is x naught and b is x5. Now that we've split our so now that we have split our interval, so our interval from A to B has now been split into five subintervals, right? So like here's one subinterval, and here's another one, here's another one, here's another one, here's another one. And these subintervals are supposed to be the same width. So delta x, that's why over here we have delta x is the width of each subinterval, right? So from here to here would be delta x, the width the width, the length here, delta x, right? Delta x. So now, again, we're let's, or let's refocus on our goal, which is to estimate this integral. So now that we have our subintervals, here's what we're going to do. We're going to actually form trapezoids, okay? So remember, with the, let me show you what we did with the midpoint. With the midpoint rule, what we did was we said, let's go to the middle of each sub interval. Let me try to get a different color. So we said let's go to the middle of each sub interval and then use that value as the height of our rectangle, right? That's what we did. So we'll go to the middle and then use that as our height of our approximating rectangle. Okay.
and then we would have here we go right here's what we're doing with the trapezoidal rule we're going to create trapezoids and here's how we create the trapezoids we use the left and the right endpoints to make a trapezoid. Let me try to get this down. So we're starting here and we start here and we're going to make a trapezoid. So that would be bam. Now start here and here that would be the trapezoid. We start here and here we would have the trapezoid. It's kind of difficult to see because I drew my line so thick for my function and then here and here we have a trapezoid. So, you know, the trapezoid is this last trapezoid is right here. Then we've got, right, for example, this trapezoid right here, this trapezoid right here. This trapezoid actually looks like a rectangle because the diagonal is so um, flat. And then we've got a trapezoid here. Okay, so now how would we find the area of all of these trapezoids? So our area is going to equal the sum of the areas of all of the trapezoids, right? So now looking back here, what's the area of this first trapezoid? For the first trapezoid, in order to find the area of the first trapezoid, let me actually just go to a new page. So the area of the first trapezoid It was kind of like this. And we had that this point right here was a naught, or sorry, this point was a. This point right here was x1. And we said that the width is equal to what? Do you remember? That width is equal to delta x. So the formula for a basic triangle or a basic trapezoid, so the general formula, we should put that up, general formula for a trapezoid here's how you figure it out. So if this is your base is from here to here, this height, let's call this H1 and let's call this H2. Here's what we can do. Let's actually move this down so we can use it better. Okay, if I take if I take this H2, right? This H2 and I were to add it up here. So this H2 up here. So this is H2. And now if I take this H1 and I put it here h1 I now have a rectangle do you see how I have a rectangle and the area of this rectangle is twice the area of the trapezoid so I would say the area for my trapezoid trapezoid area is going to be one half the area of this rectangle which is going to be base times h1 plus h2 okay so back here my base, so I want one half base times h1 plus h2. My base is going to be delta x. What is my h1? h1 is how tall this is. How tall is this, or how long is that, that side of a trapezoid? Well, it depends on this value here, right? Because this value is going to be f of x naught right 
and to get the height of my other see if we can zoom in to get this height the height of my other side it's going to depend on f of x1 okay does that make sense so we'll have f of x naught plus f of x1 okay so let me just kind of copy copy because I actually want to kind of go back to my page here and I want to um, put my formula all the way down here so let's go ahead and erase So my area is going to be the area of the first trapezoid plus the area of the second trapezoid plus the, 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 all the way plus the area of the fifth trapezoid. And so what's the area of the first trapezoid? It was one half delta x times f of x naught plus f of x1. Okay, what is the area of the second trapezoid going to be? It's going to be one half so let's get a little here, plus one half delta x times f of x1 plus f of x2. Okay, and the area of my third trapezoid is one half delta x times f of x2 plus f of x3. My fourth is going to be one half delta x times f of x3 plus f of x4. Okay, and my last one is going to be one half delta x times f of x4 plus f of x5. Okay, and so when I add them all up, I notice that I can factor out one half delta x from each term. So that's one half delta x. And then now what's left? f of x naught, f of x1, f of x1, f of x2. Oh, wait, do you see how I can combine this f of x1 and this f of x1? So I'm actually going to have f of x naught plus two f of x1s. Okay, and then also I'm going to have two f of x twos, right? So plus two f of x twos and two f of x threes. I'm just distributing here plus two f of x threes plus two f of x fours and then only one f of x five. So that's why in our formula we have delta x over 2 times f of x naught, right, that goes down, plus f of x5, plus, and then we say just take these inside terms, 2 times the sum of f of xi, starting at 1 and stopping at 4. And this is exactly what we get with... Um, just plugging in n equals 5 into the formula up here, right? So that kind of is a, is a nice little way to explain what we're doing with the trapezoidal rule. Um, what, here's, what, here's what we'll do. Let me just kind of show you here briefly a um, comparison between the midpoint versus the trapezoidal. So if we just start off, with with so let's say we have the same graph copy paste we have the same graph and if we want to do midpoint I'm actually going to do something a little bit more drastic 
to really highlight the differences between the two methods. Okay, so I'm setting it up. So let's just suppose we have something kind of like a, here's my X and here's my Y, and here's Y equals F of X. And then we'll have A is here, B it's is here. Okay. Me copy and paste. Copy. Paste. Okay. So if we were to compute M2, right, which is midpoint rule with two subintervals, what will we do? We would take our interval from A to B, we would split it in half, right? This would be X0 is equal to A, this is X1, and X2 is equal to B. Okay, then we'd have to find those midpoints. So this first midpoint would be X1 bar, and the second midpoint would be X2. 2 bar, okay, we would find the height of f of x1 bar, we f of x sub 1 bar, and f of x sub 2 bar, okay, and then we would use that height to determine the height of our approximating rectangles. So we would say from here to here, and then slightly lower from here to here, here to here, from here to here, from here to here. Maybe we can zoom in and do some cleaning up. Oh, that was too big. There we go. Okay, and so our approximation would be the area of these two rectangles. So notice with this approximation, we would leave a lot out. What would we leave a lot? What would we leave out? We didn't get any of this top up part up here. That's not included in our estimate. Neither is this, right? So the yellow is the stuff that we missed out on. And then we can put green for the parts that we included that we should not have. See, this is too much. So this is going to give us an overestimate. This is going to be because we're including in the green part when we shouldn't. And we're not including the yellow part when we should, right? So we have a bunch of opportunities for uh, error. Now let's look at what happens with the trapezoidal, using the trapezoidal rule. Okay, again we're going to do T2, which means a trapezoidal rule with two subdivisions. So here, we're not really worried about the midpoints, so we just need to know X0, X1, and X2. Once we know them, I, I need to know F of X0, F of X1, and F of X2. Okay, so that's my f of x0, f of x1, and then f of x2 looks like that's pretty much equal. Okay, and now I'm, I'm ready to draw my trapezoids. So my trapezoid is going to, it's almost hard to see, but it's got a little bit there, a little height, and then I'm going over here. And then I go straight up here, and then my fourth, I think I'm going to mess this up. Oh, there we go. Okay. And now, let me make my second trapezoid down here, over here, up here, over there. All right. So... Here we go. This just kind of looks like a better estimation 
than the estimation than using the midpoint. Let's try to show the over and the under. So the yellow, remember, is supposed to mark the area that we missed by using our approximation. So we missed this area here, and we missed this area here. Because remember, our goal, what's our goal? Our goal is to estimate the area under the entire curve, right? So with our trapezoids, our trapezoids missed some area. But they had very little over estimation, right? So highlighting the part that was included that shouldn't have been is very small compared to the top one. Okay, so there are pros and cons to using midpoint rule versus trapezoidal rule. Okay, they're essentially the same in terms of computation. The number of points are, um, are you know, pretty much the same. When it goes to uh, when it comes to the issue of estimating the error involved, that's also pretty similar. We're actually going to find the biggest dis difference when we switch from these two rules to Simpson's rule, because Simpson's rule is going to use parabolas to approximate right a parabolas area under parabolas to approximate the total area under the curve as opposed to using trapezoids or rectangles. So because trapezoids and rectangles are kind of similar to each other, right, a trapezoid is just a rectangle cut in half. Do you get that? Let me just write that down. So imagine if you have a rectangle. Well, that's not a rectangle. <laughs> but imagine if you have a rectangle and you chop it in half, you don't have two trapezoids. Do you see that? So like here's one trapezoid and then here's your other trapezoid up here, right? So because trapezoids and rectangles kind of fit together, their error, estimating their error and computing the, um, the MN and the TN is going to be kind of similar. You're just kind of off by a factor almost of two, right? So the big jump again is going to be when we move to Simpson's rule.